Hello everybody, Adrian Plass here, once yes, again. Yes, and Bridget, hello. And there's nothing remarkable at all about the fact that it's number 53. We got all our head up about 52, <laughs> but no, this is 53. Yeah, and sadly, well maybe not sadly, but last week we did get a bit excited, didn't we, about the fact that there were zero deaths in this country, in the UK, mm. on one particular day. And That's right, this week yeah. it's not quite like that at all. There aren't very many deaths, but there's still a lot of COVID there's around. There's quite a long way to go, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. feels yeah. like that really, yeah. And we were talking, weren't we, last um, week about the fact that... Uh, Hope and fear are very close neighbours, aren't they? I mean, those yes, and that was things. reflected, wasn't it, by some of the emails that we yeah, had? Yeah, it's what made me think of it. Um, one person said, uh, following last week's episode about hope, I think hope and fears are really the same things, but facing in different directions. Yeah. I hope we will be allowed to sing in church this year, but I fear we never will. I fear we will never be allowed to sing in church but I hope this year we will. And both of these express the same sentiment. In both cases, what the future holds is actually unknown. Yeah, I was thinking, Adrian, of a friend who said in their church, and I think this is happening in quite a lot of churches, he said it's a bit like the hokey cokey. You have part of your service, then you go outside to sing, and then you come back in, and then you go out again. That's right. But at least yeah. they're jolly well singing. Yeah, no, I think that's a brilliant idea. To get outside, yeah. yeah. And of course, the hokey cokey is what it's all about. <laughs> this uh, person hmm. went on to say... The same person. Yeah, yeah. 2020, 21 have confirmed, we don't know what a day may bring, let alone a year. What we're left with is faith, which by the grace of God will still be there, even at times when our hopes dissolve into disappointment. You know, that reminds me of the carol, Our Hopes and Fears, of all the years are met in him tonight. And someone who describes herself as very alone in human terms said, Concerning hope, I'm sure I've already told you my main hope is in Jesus. Yeah. I do. I'm <laughs> so sad about people being alone. It's really difficult. And for so long yeah. over this pandemic. And hopes and fears are very present in the United Kingdom right now as to whether the vaccine will be enough to stop the, I don't know whether you call it a tide or not, the tide of the Delta variant, as it's now called, mm. and that weddings can go ahead after June 21st, yeah. and whether planned travel can take place. Someone else said, I'm hoping that we will see my family for the first time since Christmas 2019 for my sister's wedding in Greece in July, given the state of travel restrictions between Brussels, where she lives with her fiancé, France, where my parents are, oh my England and Greece, hope, I won't be surprised to hear, <laughs> is a little bit thin on the ground for that too. Yeah, and that is the complication, isn't it? People do have families who live all over the place, not, not just in one other country, but in several, really. And, uh, yes... Life is still full of all the things we always worried about, isn't it? And we always hope for. You know, it's not just to do with the pandemic. And somebody said she was hoping for a lot of things, but most of them are to do with, with her daughter, who's fast approaching transition to secondary school. And I know because this particular little daughter has got some very particular special needs. We've met her. Yes, of course yeah. we have. And she said, I don't yeah. know where she'll be going yet. Nor do we yet have the necessary acronym head of paperwork <laughs> to ensure she'll be safe and supported there. It's been a long fight and hope is wearing out. And, and that is, is one uh, of the problems, isn't it? Hope it is. just... This is Amy Robinson, isn't it? Who sent that? Well, Amy Robinson has sent us a poem and the poem is called Hope. And uh, I hope she doesn't mind, but we're going to read it now because it just sums it all up, really. Hope is all we have when we have nothing. It lives in loss and in the thick of grief, deep in dust and beaten, barely breathing. Hope is a hidden heartbeat born beneath. Hope is fed on longing and remembrance. So look before you, see it, 
waiting there. Lift it high and hold it like a herald for hopes an emblem empty arms can bear. A candle flame against a boundless darkness. A mustard seed against a barren land. A baby's smile against a world of mourning. Against all death a dying stranger's hand, a whispered rumour, vanishingly small, hope is all we have, and hope is all. Oh, lovely words though, aren't they? Very, um, but it gets right to the roots of it all, and um, the, the idea of this whispered rumour. Yeah. Um, that, it, that the good things are possible. Yeah, um, and you have to hang on to them <laughs> against everything, really. So hope and fear and faith, and it it struck me where it's as though we're we're moving from one universe to a a parallel universe, um, and our experience recently have been that organisations, um, the way the things are conducted, it's as though it's the same. Thing, but with a limp or with some kind of um, broken thing in it that yeah. is making it difficult to, yeah. to be as it always was. Well, it's confidence, isn't it, I think. And, uh, and also, I think it's a little bit too much time, maybe, to create very clever apps and very clever, beautiful menus. I'm thinking about a cafe that we went to recently and there's no way we're going to say where it was, but it... It was lovely in many ways, but if you remember, it had created this very clever COVID safe app yeah, oh, that whereby was very clever, you, yes. um, yeah. you scan your phone and that brings up the menu and then on the menu you tick the things you want, which was great. So you're sitting at the table, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, then... and we felt quite cool, didn't oh, yeah. we? And we, we put in some things we thought Bridget, we'd like. I have never felt cool. <laughs> I did a bit then well, because I chose did, a yeah. scotch egg and you right. chose various other things and we yeah. waited because yeah. the idea was that you paid for it then and there. That's right. And then out it came. <laughs> yeah. The like problem magic. was that uh, there wasn't a scotch egg and uh, there weren't some other things. They hadn't got any scotch eggs. No. Yeah. So then you had to go in and correct the order, which went against the whole thing. Yeah. And some incredible confusion it ended up, if you remember, with a delightful girl arriving with two chai lattes. I can see her now looking terribly worried and whispering, are these for you? And is saying, no, one of us ordered a chai tea. And her going off very forlorn. But it is like that, isn't it? There's a sense of people wanting something really special. Mm. And actually, it's all got a bit complicated. And people are, are, are trying to get back into something confident and great. Um, but then, you know, maybe the app symbolized a sort of impossible perfection of people really yeah, not just yeah. the app you can have the app but you've got to you've got to make it make it happen really yeah yeah yes yeah, so that was a strange experience wasn't yes, it, it so was. sitting there waiting for the technology <laughs> to work it was yeah. i mean we did laugh um but then i think that's often what? where we find a bit of hope really it did occur occur to us that that sometimes you you move into something that you thought you knew that you you thought because of your experiences you could put together in mm. your head and when you get there or it happens it's completely different what were you thinking and of? then um something good can happen it could okay and what i was thinking of was was ages ago years ago we met with two very good friends who came all the way from canada to france mm -hmm. where at that time, we co-owned a little cottage. Oh, it, and, and of course, uh, the cottage was in Normandy. We may have mentioned this, but then we've mentioned most things over the last yeah. year and a half. But it was in a very rural part of Normandy. And because we were making a CD, we yeah. thought this was the perfect place. We to were have making a, a speech piece. CD. It was oh, yeah. sketches, and one of the one of the people who came was actually an actor. Um, and, and the other was um, helping to produce this That's right. CD. So between us, we thought, and I'm sure they thought, in the peace of that 
Yes. Normandy Cottage. We would really be able to work well. <laughs> well, the first thing that happened was that if someone in Canada tells you that they've got a, what do they call it? A, a, a cabin. A cabin. You go to it and you go into this vast building. Uh, they, we kept saying, you do know it's very small, don't you? Yes. And they kept going, oh, no, no problem, honestly, it'll be yes. fine. So eventually we're there. It was small. It is very small. And, um, but there were many things that we'd never realised before, weren't they? I mean, we had remembered it as being really quiet. We hadn't really remembered the bottle bank that was just outside the cottage, had we? No, there are a number of things we hadn't remembered. Um, <laughs> we hadn't, we, we, we'd forgotten to bear in mind that there was a junior school <laughs> at the other, at other end of the cottage. So Bottle Bank, what else was there? The junior school. Yeah. And the other thing that really was significant in terms of recording <clears throat> was the fact that they, <clears throat> excuse me, the French Air Force, used that valley to test their jets yeah i mean we hadn't really noticed that before when we'd been there and then and then if you remember the <coughs> farmer who owned the field next to us mm. had was going to mow it that week he had decided nothing to do with us and he was mowing it in small areas each day That's and right, taking yeah. back the grass from it so yeah. each day we were doing our recording there was the sound of the mower and so there got... was no doubt i mean french farmers were in you or if you ask if they could change their schedule, <laughs> are not exactly keen. Um, and that's so only just all, begun, really, all, hasn't it? There was all that, yeah. And uh, added to that was the fact that um, one, of, one of our Canadian friends had a very bad cold when yes, he arrived. which I caught, Which is yes. not funny, but no. you then caught it and were wheezing, <laughs> where you were, you were coughing away and things. <laughs> so all, all told, it didn't look like a recipe for anything. But we had a wonderful time. We didn't did, we? and you're going to test our memory, aren't you? Well, I thought I would. Yes, I I wrote something with all the all the stuff in. Um, at the time for the for the CD we made. Um, <laughs> let's, and th let's this have a was look it. at it. Uh, so yeah. you, you you start. <laughs> okay, loud mowers mowed, leaking taps dripped, late cockerels crowed, hedge clippers clipped, old tractors clattered. Huge lorries rumbled, <laughs> small children chattered, four stomachs grumbled. Fat pigeons cooed, mirage jets zoomed, bored cows mooed, earth movers boomed. French pipes drum, that's the pipes in the walls by the way. Yes. French mopeds droned, French bridges hummed, French cell phones phoned. Car tiles squealed, wine bottles smashed. Church bells pealed, local Wi-Fi crashed. Colin Murdoch sneezed. <laughs> Larry nearly swore. Bridget Plass wheezed. <laughs> and I actually did say a very bad word each time I banged my head on the enamelled rustic lamp hanging from the beamed ceiling. <laughs> So it was so far, wasn't it? I think we covered most of those, that, those things. That perfection that we'd imagined. It was, But yeah, it was so much yeah. more, in a way. It yeah. was so much more. It, it, it just glistened with the laughter and the overcoming the difficulties and all the rest I, of it, it really. I think because all of us were actually quite good at laughing at things like <laughs> yes. that. But if you're yeah. not, I think it would have been utterly... Yeah, Disastrous. yeah, but yeah. that's where our hope often comes from, isn't it? Really, yes. and uh, ah, so many hopes and dreams are in tatters for people. You know that it's not going to be how people had imagined it. Uh, there was so much. There's been you. You only begin to realise now how many people pre-pandemic -pa mm. had poured hopes and money and careers and everything really into something that they thought was going to give them what they wanted mm. there's so much brokenness and loss come out of this and i think i don't know what you think adrian but i think living in the north which we have now done for 12 years in our area where we live there's a lot of hope in tatters over I mean, when you think about the shipbuilding went down, the mining went down, so many other industries failed. Hmm. Yeah. And yeah. one of them 
was the glass making factories in the northeast which are no more mm-hmm. and maybe for us and i know we've mentioned it before adrian which is the beach at Siam. yeah the glass the glass and yeah. it kind of symbolizes something that was so big and yeah. strong mm. and gave financial security to the area and that broke and much of the glass, the glass that they didn't use for things, got thrown into the sea, didn't it? Yeah. And it's come back in tiny fragments that have been it's polished. It's really quite fascinating. You you sit on the beach and you, when you first go to a place like Siam, you think, well, I'll collect a lot of treasure. and, mm. and it, We'd heard uh, about the sea glass, hadn't uh, we? Oh, yeah, and we were looking for it. And at first, nothing. And then gradually you get you get better at it and you pick up one little white glowing piece mm. uh, and actually our son found a much larger piece yeah, the other day of, yeah. of green glass yeah um and it's there's, there's something very satisfying about the feeling that you're recovering something that was lost and that the sea has brought back to you i don't know if that's stupid well, but that's sort of how i I, I don't it. think it is silly really because because the idea that it's still there but in a different form mm. And I mean, you know, when we listened to these, when we read these various emails mm. about hope and fear, in a way, and faith, and in a way, I suppose that's what I that's what I hope for myself and maybe for other people that that okay, things have changed and things have broken and things that people have been disappointed, but that even if our faith feels a bit little mm. and our and our hope feels a bit as though it's hanging on by a thread, that actually we will discover that it's still there and it's been polished by yeah. all the turbulence and all the waves and all the mm. all the problems. And that maybe littler, it may not be as dynamic as we thought it was, yeah. but it could still be beautiful, maybe. It's very Is that difficult. a bit romantic? I don't, I don't know. know. I, it's very difficult. I think the whole area of faith is a very difficult one for people to speak about truthfully. Yeah. Um, and I I would go back to what and I'm boring about this, but Richard Birnbrandt saying truth is is not an acquisition; it's a direction. Now, why is that boring, Adrian? Well, no, no because I keep saying it. But um, I think um, there is enough of excitement left in me to want to to find the the next direction. Mm. And I know you want to know what we're doing next, don't you? Uh, you want yeah, to know. Yeah, I mean, our lives have changed like so many yeah, people's. That's right, yeah. The, and we're these, a bit older and a bit tired. These recordings have meant a lot to us. Yeah. And the yeah. contact with people. So yeah. there's that. But we are now saying, what now? And given what we've learned, negative and positive, mm. um, what what is faith going to mean? One thing I'm more sure of than ever. And that is that the crucial thing is to tell the truth. Always yeah, tell and the truth. and to keep laughing and to and to trust that it's going to look different, like these little bits of glass, these little fragments of glass. It's going to look different. Mm. We have been changed by this experience. People all over the world yeah. allowing that change. Don't you think that our hope is in something different? Well, my well, mine is, and I I think yours is too. It I don't know, it it's probably a a, a honing or a um, a crystallization of the things that taking them out of w- what we had and saying these are for sure, yeah, these are true, and what do they mean now? And being being very honest about it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, shall we finish with this silly poem? It's a well, we've been talking about parallel ago. universes, yeah. haven't we? Why not? We did a week at the uh, Scargill House where we work sometimes called Parallel Universe once. And th- these are some of the extracts from my Parallel Universe poem, which I don't know if we've read it before, but I'm going to read it again or some of it. In a parallel universe, the DFS sale really does end. In a parallel universe... Garages are not allowed to sell flowers, rotten little screwdriver (laughs) sets that are cheap when you buy petrol, or huge floppy maps of Britain that fall apart the second time you use them. In a parallel universe, stainless steel teapots pour 
perfect. Maybe they will in heaven, Adrian. I think that's a bit much, but they might. <laughs> in a parallel universe, um, airlines pay us to fly with them. Well, actually, they nearly are they at nearly the moment. Yes. In a parallel universe, the sun shines during the night when it's needed, but not during the day when it's light anyway. <laughs> and here's an important one. In a parallel universe, each year, at least one GCSE English student who is studying Wuthering Heights will read <laughs> Wuthering Heights. <laughs> In a parallel universe, chicken will be able to cross the road without having their motives investigated. <laughs> In a parallel universe, children do not leave school believing that Paul Gauguin played football for Spurs. In a parallel universe, my wife will be wrong <laughs> sometimes. And finally, and most oh, I know there is one more. In a parallel universe, IKEA products look as good when you get them home as they did in the store. And finally, in a parallel universe, by the grace of God, fat and cream and chocolate and cake and red wine are your five-a-day requirements for healthy living. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> yes, and please don't tell us off. We know that's not very healthy, but uh, there you go. Do you know, wouldn't it be lovely to hear um, about where people are at over... I mean, just continuing this idea of the hopes and the fears mm. that... Um, what what they're hoping their parallel universe might be. What yeah, it might that would be contain. interesting. Yeah, it certainly would. Let us know. We'll we'll see you next week. Yes. Bye bye. bye. bye.